It's another edition of Aaron's. We're here in the Big Easy where it's always easy when you're driving a Mercedes Benz. We're here at Mercedes Benz in New Orleans. I got to bring in my friend, General Manager Christopher Steuben. Now, Christopher, I appreciate your time. I know you really value the tradition of this dealership. Absolutely. We've been servicing our community for 30 plus years. Sales, um, new cars, pre owned cars. Our service department is rated number one in Louisiana. We take care of our customers on a daily basis. That's what we're all about here at Mercedes-Benz of New Orleans. We're going to pick up a special New Orleans Saint for this episode of Aaron's. What kind of car is this? This is unbelievable. This is a 2019 S650 Maybach V12, um, 602 horsepower. It's yours for the day, Mike. I promise you I'm an excellent driver. Enjoy. All right, thank you. I all appreciate right, it very you much. Go. Thank all you. Right, Mike. excited about this guest. You know, there are a lot of key figures in the Sean Payton, Drew Brees era. It's been such an unusual era. You have the best quarterback in Saints history, the best running back in Saints history, the best wide receiver in Saints history. Well, this time around, we're going to talk to arguably the best talker in Saints history. What's up, Mike? Zach Street. How you doing, buddy? Good, how are you? Good, man, good to see you. You're ready to run some errands. I got plenty to do. Yeah? I'm bagged and tagged, ready to go. We're here to help you. Let's go do it. It's known offensive linemen are the best interviews, and in the Sean Payton era, interviews didn't get any better than Zach Street. The nearly six foot eight right tackle was so good, he not only lasted 12 years in the NFL as a former seventh round pick, his verbal skills got him the voice of the Saints job the same year he retired. Good talkers are always welcome in errands, and Streif fits the bill. I know offensive linemen need room. How about this car, huh? You d you've outdone yourself, Mike. I, I want to be like you when I grow up, for sure. It's pretty nice. <laughs> yeah? It's pretty long, and yes, yeah. it looks like I could fit. I could have been hard on you and gotten a small car. Yes, you could have. But I was nice to you. But you didn't. Yes. I appreciate that. Yes. It doesn't go unnoticed. Okay. A Maybach, huh? Just for you. An S650. Just for you. You went right to the top of the food chain. You know your Mercedes, don't you? Sure I do. Yes. I love cars. <laughs> I love cars. So which errands did Zach Streep choose for us to run? Well, we'll start by tuning up his Mardi Gras float, then make a trip to his place of business, the Port Orleans Brewery, and finish by saving our best for last. But first, let's get to know the voice of the Saints better. What's your pet peeve when you drive? Is there anything that Here? irritates you? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I don't understand why people don't use the turn signals. It's so easy. <laughs> it's simple. I know what you're doing now, <laughs> right? Like, why do you have to surprise me at the last moment with this turn? Right. Or why do I have to sit there and go, and why is this guy breaking in the middle of the road? Right. Just use your turns. It's so easy, right? right? It's a very, it's, it does not cause you. It's there for a reason. Your, your past year yep. of your life, First child, yeah. retired from football, yeah. take over as voice of the Saints. How would you summarize this year? It's been a crazy 12 months. I'm and, sure. And uh, so different than what I, one, anticipated, but two, feared. Yeah. Right? Like my, my single biggest concern. I, I'm, I've always been very self-aware, like to a fault. Right. And, and because of that, I spent a lot of time at the end of my career asking guys that had left, like, Hey, what's it like? And you know, what what do you regret? And, right. and it, it was amazing. Almost universally, everybody has a struggle. And for me, with with what has ultimately happened in this transition, leaving football and retiring and making that decision to say, you know what, I'm done. I'm I'm never doing that again. Uh, I think was made easier by a couple things. One, I got to play 12 years. Right. Right? And two, I had blown my knee out and I had no desire to recover it to that level. You know, I, I just don't think mentally I, I, I was capable at that point. You knew it was time. Yeah, I knew it was yeah. time and so it made it easier to step away. And then the fact that I got to turn around the very next year and see every single Saints game in person, in the booth, travel with the team, get on the plane, talk to Sean on the way home, hang out with dude. I mean, like you couldn't write a better way to walk away from the game because I ultimately didn't have to walk away from it. I just see it from a different perspective now. Right. 
Streif is amazed by his football run in New Orleans, where he has a passion for the Saints and, of course, the city's unique style. Mardi Gras is something Streif's become a big part of. After inviting pro golfer Kelly Gibson to a behind-the-scenes party after the Super Bowl parade, Gibson returned the favor by making Streif a mainstay in the Bacchus Parade. Our first Aaron surrounds his yearly duty as his float sound guy. This is my fifth year as a member of Bacchus, riding with this group, which this group has also gotten bigger because we used to pull two floats and now Bacchaneer is four. So you can actually see all the way to the back, this float's 165 feet long. Um, so uh, they, they pull all four of these with one tractor, which is a pretty interesting scene in and of itself. Um, <laughs> well, I'll let you do your thing. You gotta check the yeah, volume. Yeah, you wanna come okay. and take a look. Okay. Do they call you the volume guy? What, do you have a nickname or is it no. just Zach? No, all you do when you get the job that I have on this is yeah. get yelled at. <laughs> For Bacchus, I think it's it's a parade with floats that will kind of blow your mind a little mm -hmm. bit. You know, right. this guy behind you, this is the new officer's float. Wow. He moves, he pulls the chalice up to his face, he looks around, his eyes blink, his mouth opens. It's pretty amazing. It's, I, I, it's, it's altered my life forever. I met right. my wife riding in Bacchus, and I also met my business partners. This float in, in its total yeah. um, is 24,000 watts. Wow. This could only be built by an offensive lineman, don't you think? <laughs> huh? Well, it was a labor of love last year, for sure. <laughs> All right, that was our first, Aaron. <sighs> Let's come over here. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. Much better two shot, much better two shot. Do you feel any better about Mardi Gras? No. I feel better talking to you now, for sure. And no, uh, I do know this, Mardi Gras does not go off without a lot of work. And uh, we're certainly not, uh, we don't get out of that job at all. So we got lots of work to do, but we'll be ready to go by uh, Sunday. Next Aaron, right here, right? Yeah, we're gonna go to Port Orleans. We got uh, some packaging going on today. All right. Uh, we gotta throw our hands in because we're brewing too, so we're a little short-handed, so we're gonna go and do a little work. All right, I'm gonna get off the Free ladder. labor. Let's do it, let's do it. You're six foot seven. Mm -hmm. Both your parents are under six feet. Mm -hmm. That doesn't happen a whole lot. No, our family photos are odd looking. <laughs> I know the last time that we sat down, I have two sisters, an older and a younger. Right. Um, my older sister is three years older than me, and my younger sister is like about 15 months younger. Oh, okay. I'm always sitting, and they're usually like one <laughs> with a hand on my shoulder and one on my lap. Or, but I'm always sitting because it looks funny to be as big as I am and not have anything like outwardly obvious as to why. It's a little bit unusual. Streif is used to being the biggest guy in the room, but once he entered the NFL, it was a wake-up call. After less than a week into his first training camp in Jackson, Mississippi, Zach thought about quitting football. At the time, things weren't going well. You called your dad and you thought maybe this NFL thing's not gonna work out, is that true? Yeah, so um, it, it wasn't the, the difficulty of the camp that made me wanna stop. It mm -hmm. was the fact that I was also getting killed every day. I was, so it's like, if I'm not good <laughs> enough, I don't wanna just be a camp body, right? Right. Like, and you know, I called my dad and, and my comment to my dad was, it's okay. Like, I'm all right if I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. I, I really think that's easier mentally than a I injury. I tried, I tried. Exactly, like, yeah. if, if I got to this point and I'm just not good enough, I'm okay with that. And, you know, my dad was, was immediately like, hey, you can't, uh, you know, you gotta finish it, you know, and that's always been my dad's thing. You, you can't start something and not finish it. Dad helped young son, but the turning point of young Zach Streep's NFL career and the reason he's everything he is in New Orleans these days is because of the words of then Saints tight ends coach Terry Malone before a training camp practice. Terry walks out of the coach's office and he was like, hey, Big Zach, how's it going? And I told him I was doing great because I was kind of brainwashed into that too in college, that you're always doing well, that your attitude is a conscious decision and you can choose to be in a good mood, and which I believe in. Mm -hmm. So I say great, even though I'm sitting there thinking this is my last practice of football ever. And, and Terry tells me, he said, man, you're doing a great job. Don't think people aren't noticing what you're going through and, and how hard, how much we're putting on you right now. You're doing great, just keep battling. You're gonna be just fine. And it was like a light bulb moment for me. I called my dad after I told him that story and I said, 
if there's a if there's a chance I'm still making this team, it's worth it. I just didn't think there was when I made that decision. Right. And so, you know, I, 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 I fortunately stuck around. And, um, and listen, I've told Terry that story many times. I hope he knows, you know, what a life-changing comment that was. And, and I also think it's, it's, it's something I've taken with me of when you see somebody that looks like they're having a bad day, you never know what a very simple comment, what kind of effect that can have in somebody's life. Because I know... Terry wasn't thinking to himself, I better save this kid's career. Yeah. The same way, you don't know when you see a person on the street that looks like that, that if you just kind of, you know, say, hey man, hope you're doing okay. You know what I mean? Like, exactly, to, yeah. tomorrow's going to be That's beyond day. football. That's, it's, that's yeah, life. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Now, these aren't staged errands. We try to help our guests. What errand are we running here? Well, we're going to go and look. I, I know they were packaging this morning. Now, we're running a little late. So I'm gonna get in trouble, uh, but we're packaging. I'm taking the back, see if we got anything going on. You're the boss, though. Uh, that's not how we work here. Oh, okay. All right. We're a team. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. So you're the owner, but here's proof you're hands-on, right? Well, yeah. Um, listen, it's a small company still, right? So right. yeah, you wear a lot of hats. All these people do. You know, one day you're you're in the market selling a, a beer tap, and the next day, you know, you're responsible for Canon, you know, packaging. What skills do you take from being a right tackle that you can use owning a brewery? Well, there's a couple things I think that are kind of universal in any business or industry or job or whatever. And one is you work your tail off. You're eventually good things will happen to you. Mm -hmm. um, this job requires that you're constantly working for the next thing. You have that same mindset as a player. You're constantly evolving. You're learning, man, my body can't do that anymore. I gotta find a new way to do it. Um, and so I think that's part of it. And the other part of it is, you know, ultimately this is a team. I do my best not to use uh, coachisms uh, around the building, but they come out sometimes. Let's take them one beer at a time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, it, it goes through my head all the time. I'm like, ah, I can't use that with everybody. All right, that was impressive. Uh, very hands-on owner. Uh, we have one Aaron left, Zach, and I get the feeling this could be the most important one of the day. Not only is it the most important one of the day, it's hands down the most entertaining one of the day, so I'm excited for it. How about that? Let's go. Let's go do it. All right, the rule of thumb, we run three errands, but we're at a brewery. I'm with Zach Streif. He owns the place. I think our final errand, we ought to fudge the rules a little bit and just have a beer together. Yeah, I mean, drinking a beer is always the final errand at Port Orleans. <laughs> this is one of the few jobs in the world where a shift of beer is a thing. Yeah. So, absolutely. You got a uh, taste of being the voice. H how long do you want to do it? Do you put a timetable on it at all? I, I have no plans. I can't imagine, have, having done it one year, and I acknowledge it was a pretty entertaining one year, you know, but I can't imagine having more fun in a job. And the number one thing I think that was hard for me was messing up mm -hmm. and being like, I don't ever see anyone else mess up. Why does no one else ever mess right. up, right? You're like, right. this is ridiculous. Like right. I'm constantly messing up. Right. And then you realize when you're in it long enough that there's it's happening all the time. Oh, yeah. Well, Zach, really appreciate your time. I can't imagine a better way to end errands. It's a great way to end the day, great way to end errands, and exactly. I appreciate the time, man. I really I enjoyed, enjoyed it. it. I yeah. really enjoyed it.